Hey guys, so we have a special guest today, Jackie, who finished fourth place at the Side Deck Remote Regional with Raid Raptor Cashier. So a uh, huge congrats, and maybe I'll just pass it off to you in terms of you know why this particular version. Sure. Um, so the main reason uh, is because with the new Raid Raptor cards that came out, I really just wanted to play Raid Raptors. Um, but I wanted to fill in some of the weaknesses that the Raid Raptor deck had, uh, and the cards that I felt helped the best were the Cashier cards. Awesome. Well, I guess we can just get right into the list then. Sure. So I'll start with the Raid Raptors. So we're playing three of a new guy, uh, three Bloom Vulture, uh, three Strangle Lanius, three Tribute Lanius. These are the three best cards of the deck, so that's probably that's why we're playing three of them. Uh, good starter, good extender, good starter slash extender. So we play three of these, max them all out. Then we're playing two Mimicry Lanius. Uh, it's a bit of a brick to open, so I've only played two. I'm also just playing two just to make sure that if I open one of them, that I still have one in the deck that I can uh, dump off of the Tribute Lanius. Uh, playing two Noir Lanius, a new one. Uh, I feel like this card's a bit weak. Um, it lets you search a Raid Raptor with a different level than uh, one you have on the field, which... Like, unfortunately, there aren't that many good Raid Raptors. Uh, so this might be something I cut down to one later in the future, but we'll see. And we're just playing one Vanishing Lanius, uh, one Raider's Wing, uh, one Heal Eagle, and one Pain Lanius. Uh, these are all mostly extenders. The Vanishing Lanius is a starter, but he's, like, a very weak starter. Like, being able... Like, a lot of people won't think to, like, Imperm or Veiler him, just because all he does is special summon from the hand. Um, but at the same time, like, that's all he does, so it's not really worth running more, I think. And then we're playing three Simorg, Bird of Perfection, uh, just as another extender. Um, it also helps as a chump block, uh, or a chain block, uh, for the, uh, Link to Y strips, uh, in case you ever need it, but otherwise it's, I usually just use it as an extender. He also should have four strips and, uh, keep the combo going there. And then we're playing for the cash part. We're playing three Fenrir, one Rise Heart, three Planet, and one Terraforming. So the reason why I chose to go with this is because one of the most important plays is with the rank seven Raid Raptor. And the cash tier and this package sort of just helps make the rank seven a lot easier with uh, less commitment, because in theory, all you need to open is either one planet or one Fenrir, or below one terraforming, and that gets you to the rank seven. Um, it also helps with like weaker boards, like uh, weaker hands, that uh, if, especially post game two, where they know you're playing Raid Raptor, so they'll side something like a dimensional barrier, then if you open part of this, then you know you can at least try to sit on the Fenrir, and if you have extra extenders with the Raid Raptors, then you can make like an IP or an SP for a little more interaction, like the game a little less uh, hopeless for you. Uh, and then for the hand traps, playing three Droll, three Ash, and three Bell. Uh, originally, the spot for Bell was for DD Crow, uh, because DD Crow is a dark wing beast. There is a bit of synergy with some of the other Raid Raptor cards there. Um, but what I found was happening a lot was I would use Crow and the opponent would be able to just extend to a dark, which would extend further. So, uh, I chose to cut Crow because of that and I'm playing the bell because instead, and I feel like it's okay. Um, there were times where I was able to hit like mostly just a flambridge, uh, being able to bring the two bodies back. So I just built the flambridge and they're left in a bit of an awkward board state because they don't have uh, enough bodies to work with. Uh, that's it for the monster lineup. I guess the cash lineup for spells. Uh, we're running one Raid Raptor Roost. A uh, new card. You only need to run one of it. It's fine at one. Uh, and then the rank ups. Uh, the new rank up. Rise rank up. Uh, rank up Magic Skip Force. Phantom Knight's Magic Force. And the uh, Phantom Knight's Magic Launch. Um, I think these are the four best rank ups to be running. Um... The launch is only really here just for uh, getting access to Cal Yuga. So, in theory, if you're not running Cal Yuga, then you don't need to run this. But if you're not running Cal Yuga, then I feel like you're missing out on a turn skip. <laughs> so, I mean, your call, but uh, these are four, four best rank ups to run. Um, opening them can be a bit bricky. 
um, which is why my main deck count is 48, uh, to try and help minimize me opening them. Um, but at the same time, like, opening one isn't bad, but if you open two, then yeah, you better hope that the rest of your hand is a bit more playable. And then running one call by the grave to play against Shifter. Although there was one time I played, I played through a Shifter and I ended on like a board that was eighty percent the full board, and I broke through a cash board. So I don't know how I did it. Uh, one foolish burial. Uh, foolish burials are more sub extender, but it, uh, you'll also see in the side deck that uh, I'm playing the foolish because I have thrust, which lets me push through a lot of uh, interruptions and such. And then three droplet. Um, it's more so an option just for helping me with going second, because it's a big combo deck, a lot of the cards like to be in the graveyard, and, uh, if the hand traps aren't enough, which usually they, are, like, one hand trap usually isn't enough in this format, you usually need two, uh, then the droplet sort of helps, like, clean up certain board states, like, if they have, like, a bunch of negates or whatnot. And then the last card is Raid Raptor Trap, uh, Glorious Sprite, this card is amazing. Uh, it's an imperm, and if you have an Xyz, it is a you can hit a spell trap instead. So, a lot of the times, like this is what you will protect you when you're trying to go for your Kali Yuga play. If your opponent tries to use something like a Cosmic Cyclone or Forbidden Droplets or like a Book of Moon, then you use this to hit the whatever they're trying to stop you with, and usually that's enough. So that's it for the main deck. Again, the main deck is uh, 48 cards. Uh, onto the extra deck. So we're playing one Raiders Knight. Uh, he's the guy that gets all the combos started. Uh, he's the most important card. If you're, if players usually ask uh, what's the best card to hit in the Raid Raptor deck is, uh, this would be it. Uh, Ray, an Imprim or a Veiler or a Mourner on this guy, and the turn is uh, infinitely harder to play through. Uh, we're playing two four Strix. I was playing three before, but um, I feel like the three might be a, a bit excessive. Um, two's enough. Uh, you could always recycle them with the Roost anyway, so... I uh, I don't think you need any more, and it gives you more room to for flexibility. Uh, new card, Brave Strix. Uh, this card's amazing. Lets you search a rank up spell or a uh, set of Raid Raptor card from your deck to your uh, field. So pretty much what the deck needed because it'll let you search your rank up to go straight into the Arsenal Falcon, which is one of the better cards in the deck. It's the whole reason why I'm running the Cashier Engine. Uh, letting you summon a guy from the deck for free is really good, and then he'll also have the grave effect of being able to convert himself uh, when I link him off into an ultimate falcon. Uh, and then a lot of people don't know that ultimate falcon actually has an effect other than being a towers. Uh, ultimate falcon is basically an azathot. Um, so quite literally, it'll get to a point when you're doing your combo where they no longer can think about nibiring or crowing or ashing. So that's what makes this card really good for the deck. And then we're playing uh, two of the new Rank 13, Rising Rebellion Falcon. Um, I'm playing two because, in theory, you can, you do go through two. Uh, you can make one during your turn, just to sort of sit on. And then you make one during your opponent's turn as a board wipe. Or alternatively, uh, if you have enough resources, you can make both two of them during your opponent's turn for a double board wipe. Um, the burn effect has also come up. Uh, it's won me a few games. Uh, especially against lab, like the lab player takes off half their life with transmission transaction rollback, so makes the work uh, half as easy for me. Uh, two Y Strix, the two didn't really come up, uh, but I feel like I need to just to, uh, as a safety net in case the first my first turn combo didn't really go off. Um, I could see I could see me cutting it down to one in the future, but I think two's two's okay as well. Uh, one Gaga Magician. Uh, the Gaga, ma or the Gaga Gaga Magician is there to help uh, make the Kali Yuga a lot easier, uh, since he sets up the Arsenal Falcon on your field to rank up. Uh, and then obviously Kali Yuga is just amazing. The turn skip and a uh, heavy storm on legs. Uh, and then for the tech spots, sort of, uh, we have one Satellite Cannon Falcon. Uh, spell speed four Harpies Feather Duster is pretty good. Uh, turns up it never came up, so. I feel I might be able to cut this in the future, but um, it is also a good sort of middle stone to help trigger certain Raid Raptor effects. And then we're playing IP and SP, uh, just to act as more interaction during the opponent's turn outside of your rank up magic, uh, because the field does have a lot of, can end on a lot of extra bodies. So I feel like, you know, just converting them into something that's a little bit more threatening during the opponent's turn is, uh, would be more useful than just having like, more XCs that I may or may not ever make. So that is the extra deck.
And then for the side deck, so as I hinted in the main deck, so we're playing three Thrust. Um, Thrust is an amazing card this format, and because of that, my entire side deck is all Thrust targets. So we got uh, one Talents, uh, one Lightning Storm, and one Harpy's Feather Duster. Uh, we got three Soul Release. Uh, I didn't really get to play this card with the matchups I was uh, given in the regionals. Uh, but in theory, I think in theory it's it's still good. I just never got a chance to use it at the regionals. Uh, we got three Evenly. Evenly is an amazing card. And for the last weird choice, it's a three Dark Hole. Uh, one problem with the Raid Raptor cards is a lot of them need you to control either no cards or all Wing Beasts or, like, or whatnot. So... If they debure you during your combo, then it's it can be hard to recover because you're stuck with a token. Uh, so that's what the dark pool is there for to help clear clear your board and like uh, basically start fresh. And you can proc off some other effects if you uh, if you have them. Awesome. Uh, and that's basically it. Well, thank you so much again for the deck profile. And again, huge congrats. Uh, any last shout outs? Yeah, I just want to shout out the guys at my local, the uh, uh, Untouchable Miltons. Uh, those guys are all fun to be around. And shout outs to my uh, my teammates, Troy and Romeo, for helping me with uh, a lot of the theory and uh, testing. Awesome. Thank you.